Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our presentation is entitled one for the book, and we dedicate it to the gallant officers and men of the Air Rescue Service of the United States Air Force. On duty around the clock, they operate in all kinds of weather and in all types of climates, from the Arctic wastes to equatorial jungles, their courage unsurpassed. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. The first, trim as an arrow and faster than sound. That's how the new high-flying jets of today's United States Air Force measure up. They soar through the skies, around the clock, constantly on the alert, protecting America's frontiers. And you can help keep them there. And you can build yourself a highly rewarding career at the same time. How? By becoming an airman. Today's airmen are attending the world's finest air technical training schools, learning such fascinating skills as radar, air traffic control, air intelligence, just to name a few. Today's airmen are developing new leadership qualities, gaining new prestige, serving as American ambassadors of goodwill in colorful assignments all over the world. They're stepping out smartly in the trim blue uniform, a uniform that marks them as a member of freedom's greatest defense team, and they're gaining rapid advancement in careers that are second to none. Find out how you can qualify as an airman. Visit the friendly people at your local United States Air Force recruiting station today. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production... One for the book. Captain Hartley, all that for lunch? You're going to get it back. Oh, hiya, Carol. I'm a working man. Oh, don't give me that, Chuck Hartley. I've known you since you were in knee pants. Remember? Here, let me take a tray. Have a seat. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Well, you're not doing so bad yourself. Look at that coconut cream pie. Always the little gentleman. <laughs> Always. Well, what's new to coin a phrase? Well, nothing much. Got a letter from your mom bawling me out because you haven't written. What's the matter? Too many late dates with uh, Tony Sewell? Tony? I haven't seen him since I got back from Hickam this trip. He's in Okinawa. And how is the Air Force's answer to Gregory Peck these days? Very well, according to a letter I got. He's coming back tonight. Uh, these jet jockeys. Oh, you air rescue people are all alike. A heck of a nice bunch, though, aren't we? I hate to admit it, but you are. Well, I suppose I won't be seeing you much if Tony's heading back this way. Not that you do, anyhow. Not half enough. Well, it's your own fault. And anyhow, I'm flying back to Travis on Saturday. Well, you flight nurses have it made. Give my regards to Knob Hill. <laughs> You'd think we never did any work at all, the way you talk. No, no, don't hit the panic button. I was just kidding. Okay, okay. Only, I'm sensitive. Look, uh, Carol, I've got to run. I'm working the 4.30 shift in ops tonight, but I've got eight million chores to attend to before... Okay, that's the trouble with you. You're always running out on me. Well, you've always got Tony. I'll give him your love. Do that. Sergeant, know what the warble's about? No, Captain Hartley. Yes, I've just got hold of it. No, I haven't had the word. Okay, I'll check with him. What's the scoop, Smitty? Oh, F-86 on route to Okinawa to Tachikawa <clears throat> missed his last check. Well, where's that put him? According to his flight plan, in here someplace, between two and 500 miles south, roughly. Pretty roughly, too. Who's on the alert crew? Hobart, Rogers, and Van Ness. Anything else I ought to know? Well, that's all I've got. Just now came in. Okay, so long. 
Heck, I hate to leave you like this. Oh, it's not your flap. Go on, go on. I give you enough trouble when we're flying together. <laughs> now, okay. Watch up, Smitty. I'm about ready to take off. That truck will fill you in. He's relieving me. Okay. Uh, hold it, Hobie. This may be some more dope. So long, Smitty. Good night. Rescue Control Center, Captain Hartley. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got very little on it right now. F-86. He missed his hourly check. I see. Uh, yes, I'll call you, sir, when anything more comes in. Right. There's an old man checking. Heard the warble over in his quarters. You heard what I told him. Last position was here. I wish we could narrow it down some. Yeah, well, maybe we'll on course with a dead radio. What's the word from weather on Typhoon Tessie? I haven't checked with him yet. I just got here. Heard about it on the radio this afternoon, though, and I have an idea we won't like what they have to say. <clears throat> Captain Hartley, Rescue Control Center. May I speak to the forecaster, please? Thanks. It's been blowing up all day. The last I heard, she was due to hit here sometime tomorrow. Yeah, and he's south of here right in the pass. No place to be floating around on a life raft. Oh, hello. Yes. Yes, thanks. Uh, well, what have you got on your girlfriend, Tessie? I see. Well, at the moment, I'm interested in the entire area between here and Oki. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot. Good night. Well, just about what we figured. She's moving up at about 20 knots per hour. A little slower than they thought earlier, if that's any help, but... Meantime, you've got the usual increasingly gusty winds up to 40 knots. Like it? I can't say as I do, but we'll get along. Okay, follow the usual pattern tonight. See what you can pick up on his normal course. Well, with this kind of weather and uh, radio that's acting up, it could get off course right easy. Uh, you know how far a life raft can drift in a stiff wind. Well, if he got his life raft floating, he'll have flares and an emergency transmitter. If he got it floating. A lot of it. Well, do the best you can, and good luck. Okay, I'm taking off, but I'm afraid someone else needs all the luck. <laughs> Rescue Control Center, Captain Hartley. Yes. Yes? A signal, you say? I see. They're sure it was May Day. I see. Uh, what time was that? Mm hmm? Oh, will you repeat that position, please? Oh, thank you. I can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Yes, uh, goodbye. Clover calling Buffalo One. Clover calling Buffalo One. Come in, please. Buffalo One here. Can you read me okay? You're coming in awfully garbled. Go ahead, I read you. Japanese Maritime Ministry just notified us. This afternoon at 1653, a trawler picked up a weak mayday signal. The trawler was about 500 miles due east of Fukuoka, he thinks. They don't keep very accurate position records. He couldn't raise the signal again, and about that time his own radio went out, so he continued on course. He just now got his radio going. You got that? That's pretty far from where the 86 ought to have been at that time. Right. Think the signal was distorted by a freak? May have been, but it's something to go on anyhow. Right. I'll check. It's probably NG, but I'll check. And the SA-16 is turning back right now, sir. Yes, sir. The, the alert crew is ready to go. I see. I see. Yes, sir. I'll do that right away. No, sir, we've had no report since the May Day that trawler picked up. No, sir. I'll call you the minute anything comes in. Uh, Mrs. Burke, I'm sorry to bother you after hours. This is Chuck Hartley. Frank there? Right. Thank you. Oh, Frank, Chuck Hartley. I'm on ops tonight. Look, I'm sorry, fella, but I'm afraid you're going to have to break up that bridge game and fly. Yep. Okay, I'll give you the word when you get here. Right? BOQ-12? Captain Hartley, Rescue Control Office. Will you call Major Al Stebbins to the phone, please? Yes, I'll wait. Yes, sir. The SB-29 has gone out, sir. Yes, sir. Well, there's always a chance if he's got flares. Yes, sir. Well, anyhow, at least Tessie's holding off. We may have better luck in the morning. Right. I'm being relieved now, sir. 
Hey, Captain Grant. Right. Hey, good night, sir. So long, Jack. Yeah, take it easy. This is an unexpected pleasure. Not every night you can find a girl in your car, huh? I thought you could use a cup of coffee when you finished your tour. Come on, drive me over to the nurse's quarters. We've got it hot and black at all times of the day and night. You gals are the greatest coffee drinkers in the world. <laughs> we have to be, the hours we work. And uh, speaking of hours, you sure it's all right? Of course, come on. Boy, I can sure use the coffee, all right. Rough night? Yeah, sort of. A crash? Or shouldn't I know? Well, that's okay. It's been released to the papers already. There's an F-86 en route from Oki to Tachi. And he's down? No, we don't know yet. We're racing against the typhoon. I heard about that. That'll interfere with your search, won't it? Well, it's not so bad for us. The SA-16s are good in any weather. You can operate them over land, sea, or snow. We have an SB-29 out looking, too. You mean, then, that the weather interferes with your seeing anything? Well, mostly it's a question of his chances. He's out in the ocean somewhere, then. Yeah. All those miles of black water and one little life raft. Well, there are flares, and each raft is equipped with a sending set. It's a weak signal, much weaker than those organ grinders you've seen in your hospital aircraft. Only has about a 20-mile radius, but we can usually pick it up. How? Well, very roughly, we divide the map up into squares, and our search planes cover each square methodically, flying back and forth. As each square is eliminated, we narrow the emergency area down more and more. The SB-29s can't land in the sea, though. Well, they carry aluminum lifeboats. If they find them, they'll drop one of those. Then we radio the nearest ship or send a SA-16 to pick them up. Just like that. Nothing to it. Nothing much except teamwork, training, nerves. No wonder you look all in. Well, in a way, it takes more out of you when you're on the ground. At least if you're out looking, you're doing something. Back in ops, you keep wondering what's going on. You try to stay off the radio as much as possible. The pilot's listening for that little weak signal. Mm. Even a minute's inattention, and you can fly right over it. Then you must decide how many ships will be sent out, how urgent the search is. Not that they aren't all urgent. Hey... Here we are. You know, you fellas do a real job. I think I'll hit Tony on the head the next time he starts ribbing you about your SA-16. Well, one thing we don't worry about is ribbing, because we always know it's just that. Any pilot's chances of needing us in the immediate future are too big for them to give us a real hard time. But uh, speaking of Tony, how is he? Give him my love? You know, I should be mad at him. He stood me up. Stood you up? Yes. I called Ops at Tachi, and they said they didn't have any ETA on him. <laughs> Guess he's got another girl in Naha or something. I hope so. <laughs> Don't tell me you're jealous. We've known each other too long for that. No. No, it's only that... Is there a phone around here? Not there in the foyer. What's wrong, Chuck? Nothing yet. Chuck, what is this? Hold it, Carol. Chuck Hartley, Bob. No, I'm, I'm just an eager beaver. Bob, do me a favor, huh? Check with the duty NCO. I imagine he has an identification by now. No, just curious. Now, wait. What's this about, Chuck? Take it easy. I'm just checking something I forgot. You are not... You, you don't <laughs> think... Yeah, Bob, I see. Okay, thanks. Tony, excuse me. Yes, 86. Yep. Oh, Chuck. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, One for the Book. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Are you interested in a career with a promising future? There are hundreds of jobs, 
ranging from administration and accounting to electronics and construction, open to you in the United States Air Force. A handy new 84-page booklet entitled Pocket Guide to Air Force Opportunities gives you the complete story. Everything pertinent to an Air Force enlistment is covered, from basic training to promotion and travel information. And there's a special section where more than 100 technical training courses are described and illustrated. For these and many other interesting facts on what the Air Force can mean to you, pick up your absolutely free copy of Pocket Guide to Air Force Opportunities from your nearest Air Force recruiting station. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of One for the Book. Take it easy, Carol, honey. It's going to be all right. Carol. Darn, I don't know what's gotten into me. Carol, I know how much this means to you. I'm not important. I wish I could be out there now. Carol, he'll be all right. Of course he'll be all right. Hobie. My oak is Ivers. Looks like a real slap. Well, the old man's going all out, I guess. Everyone in the outfit's flying except the alert crew. Well, almost. It's at 86. Typhoon's still approaching from the south, and if he's not pulled out by afternoon, I guess he won't be. Smitty coming yet? Haven't seen him. You're not flying, are you? No, worse luck. I'm on out. Oh, I'm going to go up to get a weather check and a fresh briefing. If you see Smitty, tell him to meet me down on the flight line. I'm just going up to Ops now. I'll come with you. I, uh... I hear you know that guy in the 86. He always gets around. I hear you up and volunteered to fly last night. So what? Well, you know what they say about volunteers. You've been around long enough. Can to... it? What's the matter? You got a dear John? In no way, in no way. Oh, don't be so touchy. <laughs> Captain Hartley. Is he here today? Well, Captain Hartley's flying. In fact, almost everyone's flying. Today? In this weather? Yes, ma'am. Captain Hobart be able to help you? He's operations officer. I don't know. Except for the alert crew and Colonel Burgess, there's no other officers around just now. Crews that flew last night are off duty. Well, I wouldn't want to bother the colonel. Uh, where is Captain Hobart? Could I see your identification card, please, ma'am? Oh, sure. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You'll find the captain up the stairs here. First door to your right. Thank you, Sergeant. I can read you better now. You get my position? Roger. Anything else? We're coming around to make another pass now. You know how it is. You spot something and then you buy it. By the time you get back around, it's gone. Right. Yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? I don't know, really. I'm Lieutenant Maddox. I was looking for Captain Hartley, but they tell me he's flying. I was wondering about the, the F-86. Is there any news? I'm a friend of Chuck's. It's not official or anything. Well, I can't see any harm in your knowing. We think we've spotted him. If you'll wait a moment, we may have something else. You stationed here on the base? I fly around between here and Hickam and Paddock. How do you like Japan? Oh, fine. Buffalo I... 4 calling Clover. Clover, here. Go ahead. It's him, all right. Came around and my crew chief got a good look. Signal's weak, but audible, about 15 miles. Dropped him a boat. The guy must be unconscious. He never moved or anything. It's a miracle he hasn't capsized, too. Seas must be making 8 or 10 feet at times. Wind's a good 30 knots. We're going to make another pass. Maybe he'll hear us. Over. Roger. What will happen now? Is he safe? Well, I don't know, Lieutenant Maddox. According to the pilot, the voice you just heard there, the... Seas are running so high that if he's unable to transfer himself to the boat they drop, well, it doesn't look so good. How can he signal them if he's unconscious? Doesn't he have to press a button or something? Well, a hand transmitter works two ways. As a rule, a guy doesn't use it until he hears an aircraft approaching. Lasts longer that way. 
But if he felt himself getting weak, he might have the presence of mind to set the trigger for a constant signal. And that may be what he's done. The signal is ordinarily effective for about 20 miles. And the pilot said he could only receive it at 15. So it's getting weaker. That's right. And if it goes out altogether? Well, let's just hope it won't. Buffalo 4 here. Go ahead. That guy's out for sure. Never made a move. Over. Okay. You'll have to orbit. Try not to lose visual contact. Negative, Hobie. I bought a round-trip ticket on this trip, and I don't want my money back. That's right. You're getting short on gas. I can stay about ten more minutes. How near is the nearest aircraft? I'll check. Don't leave until you hear from me. Roger. Clover, calling Buffalo 6. Clover to Buffalo 6, over. Buffalo 6 here, go ahead. Give me your position, please. Buffalo 4 here. Go ahead. Sorry, we've got the captain's train. Okay, go ahead. The 16 is still about 20 minutes from it. Chuck, I'm, I'm going to check with Hobie again. We've been over this area with a fine-tooth comb. We haven't picked up a thing. Maybe we've got a wrong bearing. Huh? Once more around, Smitty. Yeah, with this wind, the current's pretty stiff. He could drift for miles while we were trying to get here. If he hasn't capsized. Yeah. We're getting low on fuel ourselves. Look at the gauge. I know. What's eating you, Chuck? Nothing. Hey, Chuck. Listen, that's it. That's his transmitter. Listen. We're coming in on it? Hey, we're losing. We've got to come around again. Yeah. Captain Hartley, I spotted him. Where? We're right over him now, sir. Look. See anything, Smitty? Yeah, yeah, right there. Everyone who can see him, keep your eyes glued on that spot. I'll have to come around for another pass. We can't afford to waste time losing him. You can't put her down in those seas, Chuck. Taylor said they were running at least eight feet. Oh, nothing like that. What's Smitty got to say? Nah, nah, it's a mill pond. Sort of a, well, a freak, I guess. Freak? Anyhow, we can't do anything else. Fuel's getting low and Tessie's getting closer. And don't try to tell me you'll send someone else out. Orbiting over this guy isn't going to do him any good. I hope you know what you're doing. Listen, quit worrying. I'm the guy who's got to face the old man, aren't I? Yeah, unless you don't get back. We're all with you, Chuck. That's right, Captain. I think we'll swim. Yeah, we may be doing both in a minute. Look and do, Smitty. Yeah. Well, that's up to all of you. I think we can make it the next time. Go ahead, Captain. We all say there's no sense quitting now. Can I get you something, Miss Maddox? A cup of coffee or a Coke? No. No, I'm all right. Why don't they call back? They haven't said a thing since they said they were going to attempt the landing. Well, they get pretty busy trying to pull someone aboard. How long's it been? Well, let's see. Uh, only 15 minutes. A lifetime. Come on, have that coffee, sir. No, thank you. Buffalo 6 to Clover. Buffalo 6 to Clover. Go ahead. This is Clover. We accomplished the pickup okay. Now I've got to get out of here. Paramedic says he's okay. Shock, abrasion, but no pull through. You haven't got any time to lose. Field's almost closed down now. You can just make it on GCA. The ceiling is a little over 500. The visibility is a mile. Come on in, now or never. Chuck? It's gonna be okay. Oh, no, I know. I heard it all. It was wonderful. Just routine, honey. Just routine. Oh, don't say that. I know. I tell you, I was in an office all the time, and they told me what you were doing and, and how brave you were. Carol, honey, that's one thing you can't hang on me. I just have one heck of a crew. I know. They're wonderful, too. Okay, kid. You've got a patient there. You better take care of him. I hope you'll be very happy. Chuck! Chuck! Oh, Captain Hartley. The colonel's very anxious for your report. Yeah, I'll make it up right away. 
Hartley. What's the matter now? You listen to me, Chuck Hartley, for once in your life. You hear? Yeah, but... Just listen. Don't talk. You poor crazy dope. You think because I was worried about Tony last night that I'm in love with him or something, don't you? Well... I know you do. It would never occur to you that I could get worried about him just because he's a nice guy that I happen to know, who's taken me out a few times and all that sort of stuff, that I was up upset as, as I'd be over anyone, over a patient or, or anyone. Well, now, listen to me. Oh, gee, Carol, Listen. I... I went out with Tony Sewell and throngs of other people. Did you ever ask me out? Did you? Well, I... No. Well, well, gee, we grew up together, Carol. I, I didn't think you'd want to... Sure you didn't. You never think about me. Quiet, please. Oh, Chuck. I was so worried about you. The trouble with you is you talk too much. Um... Rescue Control Center, Sergeant Hopkins speaking. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, he just came in now, sir. Just a moment. Uh, Captain Hartley? Captain Hartley? Would you step over here, please? Colonel Burgess wants to speak to you. Darling. I am a big dope, aren't I? Captain Hartley? Don't you ever say that again. I'm the only one who can call you a big dope. Sir, the colonel's on the line, sir. He's waiting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Oh, did you say the colonel? Uh, <clears throat> be right there. Opportunities by the hundreds. They're opening now in the United States Air Force. You can take advantage of these opportunities and build yourself a highly rewarding career. In the Air Force, you'll find a specialized career to suit every aptitude and interest with special emphasis on leadership and rapid advancement. Train in the world's finest technical training schools. And when you graduate, you'll be a proud member of this high-flying defense team. Your assignments will take you to new and interesting places at home and abroad. Now is the time to get complete information on your career in the United States Air Force. Visit your local Air Force recruiting station today and talk it over with the friendly people there. been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>